G'day guys. What we've got here is an engine. Not just any engine, it's my engine and it's been tuned semi-recently. Yeah, so I'm not really here to convince anyone to get an engine tune or talk them out of it. I just thought it'd be interesting to see some numbers with the engine tune itself and see how long it would take, for example, to pay for itself through the way of spending less in fuel. And so I did a little bit of a semi-scientific thing. Um, what do you call them, experiments? I did, a, I did some things. So you probably can't tell just from first glance that I've had a tune done, but when I show you the before and after shots, you'll really see the difference. So engine tunes, why do you get them? What do they do? They play around with your fuel ratios and they bring in the power at, with diesel engines, you would normally have it come in at an earlier rev range. They fine tune your exact engine because there are small differences in each engine, even of the same model. You want to do an engine tune as one of the last things you do. For example, after you do an exhaust or if you are going to upgrade your intercooler, you would do the engine tune after that. If you do an engine tune and then later on you get an exhaust upgrade and an intercooler upgrade, really you need to tune it again. Now, the reason I decided to get an engine tune, I had done an exhaust and I had done some upgraded intercooler pipes and that was it. That's all I plan on doing in the near future. I was happy at this point to get an engine tune. Now, the reason I wanted it is, I guess, the fuel efficiency, but just to make the engine run smoother to be at its best and to get that increase in torque and power. A lot of the driving that we do in Australia, in WA especially, but in Australia as a whole, is sand, it is the beach, everyone loves the coast. Even if you're going on inland tracks, it never hurts to have more torque. Torque and fuel efficiency, they're the two main things that I was looking for. So I just got a pretty basic tune. There are different levels that you can go to. I do not have an upgraded intercooler. I was not going through an upgraded turbo or upgraded injectors or any of that. I don't need a shit ton of power. I just wanted the best that I could have with what I had at the moment. I want reliability to be the number one thing. Any benefits after that is just a plus. You will see different benefits, whether you have a DPF or pre-DPF car. So keep that in mind as well. Every engine is different. The numbers that we talk about today are not even specific to this 3.2 litre because they change depending on the way you drive and all that sort of stuff. So as far as the numbers of the actual tune, pre-tune 427 newton metres, post-tune 558. So the peak does come in later technically, but if we look at the chart and we go back to see that where we used to have 527 at that rev range, we now have 550. The peak is 558 a little bit later on, but even at the original peak, we have much better torque. In fact, we saw a 30.7% increase in torque. Same applies with the power. I've got it in horsepower here. So we've gone from 170 to 200. That is a 17.6% increase in power. But that power does come in a tiny little bit earlier in the rev range. Matching the RPM for RPM, we go from 170 to 195. So even at the same RPM, I mean, it's just better across the board. What do I have to explain? Now, I have a long range tank and I have an ultra gauge. I use this for knowing roughly how much fuel I have left. It reads some parameters from the car, such as the mass airflow sensor and RPM, and it gives an educated guess of how much diesel you think you've used. You put in a correction factor or you tell it how much you've actually used at the Bowser when you fill up. It has a correction factor and it uses that to judge how much fuel you're using. And you can set trip meters and reset them and all that. Now, before I did the tune, I actually had a trip meter going, not with this in mind, it's just something I had, but I took a photo of it. After I did the tune, I went through the whole calibration process and then I started a new trip meter. Now, what we can do is compare the numbers and we can see just roughly how much fuel you might save if you tune your engine. Now, the key point to this is that you drive in the same style that you did pre and post tune because if you suddenly have all this extra power and you try and use it and you do mad skids because you're a mad dog and you couldn't do them before, well, your fuel number is going to go through the roof regardless whether you've got a tune or not. So for both trip computers, I've used roughly 593 litres. For two litres less fuel, I got an extra 220 kilometres out of it. What we're actually looking at is the averages though. We got 12.4 pre-tune and 11.8 post-tune. This is, firstly, I just want to say, this isn't a scientific experiment because there are a lot of different 
contributing factors such as what the conditions were like when I put in the correction factor, the calibration of the ultra gauge, and also what the conditions were like during the trip meter itself. That applies to pre and post tune for the correction factor and also the trips. You can see already the average kilometres per hour of pre tune is higher. This actually lends to a lower average litres per 100 because this car is at its best at about 80 kilometres an hour average, but it's quite good at 100 and 110. Doing city driving, which I did more of post tune, actually lowers your average kilometres per hour. It's a lot of stop start and you get worse fuel economy. So this 0.6 litres here, it's probably actually more than that. If I was doing the exact same drive and averaging the same speeds, I think the savings would actually be bigger than what we have here. This isn't a purely AB testing, so not 100% scientific, but I still think it is quite interesting to look at. And the other factors that I'm talking about with the correction factor and the trip itself is obviously, you know, is it summer, is it winter? The car is more efficient with the colder air, but also in the summertime, not only is the car less efficient, you're also blasting your air conditioner if that adds to the fuel. And this sort of stuff I didn't control for. This was just a general look at things to see what sort of numbers you can expect. Now, post tune, before I did this trip up north to Sandy Cape and everything, the lowest I saw it was actually 11.6. So I'm gonna use the 11.6 for this calculation. At that time, before I started going off road and using low range and all that through the sand, the average kilometers per hour would have been a little bit higher. Still not as high as the other one, but it would have been closer to an even match. So importantly, the cost of the tune for me, $1,365. Using a rough diesel price here of $1.80 per litre, it fluctuates all the time, but $1.80 per litre is what we're gonna to use today. That means I have to save 758.33 litres for the tune to break even or have paid for itself. Now using the 11.6 number to compare it to the 12.4, we have 0.8 litres difference. So if I save 0.8 litres every 100 kilometres, 758.33 divided by 0.8 would give our amount of 100 kilometre chunks, if you will, which is 947.91 distances of 100 kilometers. So that equals 94,791 kilometers that I would have to drive, assuming we maintain a 0.8 liter advantage and this tune has paid for itself. I think the true savings are actually a little bit bigger. So it could be 75,000 Ks. It could be 105,000 Ks. If the injectors start to wear differently and all this, there's so many different variables, but yeah. So the way I've calculated it with the information that I have, 95,000 kilometers, the tune pays for itself. So those are the numbers for anyone that's interested. Obviously, we don't get a tune as an investment. It's not a return on investment type of purchase. The reason I got it was because I want the engine to hopefully be at its best and then therefore last longer. And then I wanted more power in sand and I wanted more torque up inclines, for example. There are plenty of reasons to get one, you know, if you tow. If you're into like hardcore four-wheel driving, which I don't do, but then you might want a bit of power to get up rock steps. There are so many reasons to get a tune, but I just wanted to look at it from a different angle today because as I said, not an engine expert. I take all these numbers with a grain of salt. There are so many variables in this that I didn't have the time to account for. This is just a general test to give you guys an idea of how much you could possibly save if you had an engine tune. I'm not sure if this has been helpful or if it's made sense, but Hopefully it has done at least one of those things or both. I don't know. Yep. But just thought it, well, I was happy at this point to get an engine tune. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on.